Hello, hello everyone. We're here at uh, Mascoma Lake, heading to work. Thought I would do a video. That's good enough. My coffee. Hanging out there. <sighs> All right, we're still recording. Yep. There we go. Want to lose the phone? Well, good morning. It's Thursday, July sixth. I've been back at work for a couple of days now. This is now my last day at work for about a week, because I am heading uh, to Maine with Heather's family. Look at this. I mean, can you guys just, can you just believe it? <laughs> it's so beautiful, man. I wonder if we're being redirected up here. It's a uh, no through traffic. I have to go a long way. Yeah, uh... Had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off, 4th of July, and went back to work Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday through Wednesday, we're on another lake house. It's always funny if you want lake houses that rent lake houses. Um, in Maine, with uh, Heather's family, they rented a house and a boat, and um, yeah, it's going to be fun, very fun time. So... They're finally fixing that, that disgusting uh, bridge over there. I mean, it was great for, for my bike, but not good for my car. So. All right, so let's uh, go through a few topics. First off is, um, well, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys that watch these videos. But just keeping in mind that uh, I've got 1,300 subscribers now. Uh, from a thousand back in uh, New Year's. So thanks very much for everyone that's uh, that's joined the channel. And these vlogs get about fifty views. It's pretty good. You know, most of you come here for the golf hour content. Uh, some of you are here for bikes, but you know, I'm not really an expert at this kind of stuff. So my bike stuff is mostly from you know recommended videos, not from subscribers. And uh, the fifty of you that watch these videos, most of you stick around for about two and a half minutes. So, I would estimate by now, is it already dead? Nope. If you're still watching, you are in the minority. Thumbs up. <laughs> um, yeah, so, thanks thanks always, always guys, for, for your support and watching things. I got a, oh, by the way, I didn't even mention this the other day. I've got a new um, Patreon supporter. Now, the thing is, um, I still have a lot more people reading my my blog than I do watching my vlogs. So, <clears throat> who knows if this person is um, a, a blog reader or a blog watcher, but they committed to a two bucks a month. So, uh, the minimum is a dollar a month. And uh, they support other uh, personalities like Humble Mechanic. So, I'm going to assume that they are a YouTube person. Uh, Humble Mechanic, and I think Engineering Explained, plus my channel. So, so I'm up there with those guys. <laughs> uh, but that was cool. I, I can't remember your name, but but thanks for the two dollars a month. Uh, I, I I you know I, I got a comment the other day on my um, motorcycle. Uh, I dropped this thing and I was doing the heat crash bar feedback, and uh, someone actually left a comment saying, "I'm not giving you. I'm not supporting your pay." Or, you're begging for money on Patreon so you can buy more shitty bikes to crash. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm not. I mean, the Patreon specifically does say <clears throat> that my, uh, I think my server, my virtual private server is like four four hundred a year, and it runs everything. I mean, every everything that I do, uh, even my videos go up there, even though you guys don't watch them there. Uh, photos, videos, backups, uh, my my WordPress site, my business site. Uh, everything, my wiki, my personal wiki, 
my email, everything goes through there. So uh, I also have a, a micro blog there. So all that stuff sort of gets um, paid for. And I thought, hey, it'd be cool to see if people that read my blog would be interested in it. So I added the, added the, Patre- added the Patreon link to YouTube as well. And, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not begging for money. Uh, I haven't actually mentioned it, I don't think, in these vlogs. And um, I'm not giving any benefits. There's no, there's no benefits that's short of, you know, on Patreon. So those that do it, it's, it's, it's really just because they want to. And it goes directly to paying my server costs. If it exceeds that, I'll use it for camera gear. That's pretty much it. And I, I, I'll make these videos anyway. So it's not as if I'm coast here. It's not as if I you know, need the money. But, uh, oh, so the last thing, the last uh, more administrative news is that I am now at $88 earned on YouTube over the last 30 days. Um, which is up from about, I was earning about average of 50 to $50 a month in January. So we've, we're getting up there. Uh, I'd like to hit $100 by August a month, but I'm going to need to put out some real quality-ass content to, to, to do that for you guys. So I'm not spending any time soon. I would take the super windy back road today, but I'm going to go dirt instead of... Um, I'm going dirt instead of twisties. And it's just... Uh, I'm already... I'm not late for work, but it's 8.30. I should be at work by now. I, I usually get up at 6.30 and work by 7, 7.15. But... Uh, I just didn't do it today. It's, it's not a huge deal. I don't have a work schedule. I just have to work longer in the afternoon if I arrive later. It's, uh, you know, get your eight hours in, basically. All right, so now we've done administrative stuff. Um, topics. The bike. It is, I mean, I've been seriously shopping around for a KTM 1290 Adventure or 1190 Adventure. Uh, why? Uh, lower cost. Uh, more tech. Um much cheaper accessories and, uh, and and more more riding modes. So, you know, like lower power when you're on dirt versus road. And the reason, just twofold. I think BMW is too expensive. I think, uh, you know, I spent like 800 bucks getting the maintenance done on this thing in, in March. Uh, I'll have to do it again in October. That's $1,500 a year in maintenance. <clears throat> That's if nothing breaks. <laughs> That's if everything stays fine. Uh, I spent the four hundred dollars these crash bars, and they were shit. And I've got to buy another three hundred and fifty on some some lower crash bar supports from another company. Uh, yeah, we'll take this road, uh, which is, is is a pain in the ass. Uh, last November, when I was in uh, Asheville, I fell and damaged my uh, engine guard on the left side. So I'm going to buy aftermarket one of those. So when you factor in the new crash bar mounts along with the um, the new engine guards of 650 What's that? that's 650 I'll have to spend to, uh, to basically get this bike ready to take another fall and I'm doing the southern part of the, the hamster ride the ADV ride or hamster ride in uh, uh, probably the end of this month so now I'm looking at 650 uh, to get it fixed the Tires are fine this year, but I need to get new tires this winter. Come on, no car, no car. Um, the other stuff, you know, I mean, I the left paneer is being repaired by now by a guy that does welding. So he's doing some TIG welding on it um, and hammering it out. But So it'll get through. It, if, as long as I don't crash again, the left, fucking hell, the left paneer is going to be fine. But uh, I definitely need to get the bum out luggage, which is twelve hundred bucks for that. Uh, eventually, so we're looking at two grand to fix things that are broken on the bike and get it back to where I feel comfortable riding again. I can ride it fine; it's, it's working fine. But I just don't feel comfortable on it. Uh, I feel like if I fall one time, and it makes me not—it makes me not take any chances off road. Like I'm, I don't feel like I can actually open the things up and, 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 and fall. I don't mind falling, but if I fall. I don't want to have to, like, hobble back with, you know, my paneers rock strapped to the frame or have a busted-ass cylinder head. Uh, I also want a new engine guard, a more meteor engine guard, because the stock one is just shit. 
And uh, all this stuff costs money. So, and that's before I even add any auxiliary lights or anything like that to the bike. Um, and I know that the, I know the KTM LCA is not the known for being as robust as the Boxer engine. Uh, the weight's a little bit higher. Uh, but they've pretty much got a perfect, uh, a perfect engineering job of making the 1290 Adventure go toe to toe with the GS Adventure. Uh, the fuel tank's a little bit smaller. That's probably my. But if the fuel gauge works, then I won't care. <laughs> you know, uh, I would need to buy a bigger screen. Uh, there's a couple things, but either way, I don't go. Either way, the uh, the, the draw is real. So switching over to a 1290 Adventure. Uh, right now, the bike has 21,000 miles on it. I owe like seven on it. It's worth between 10 and 11. So I could sell it right now as is. It'd be someone else's problem who wants to actually work on it themselves. And I could get a 1290 Adventure for five to six grand less than a new GS Adventure. That's another thing, too, is the cost of entry is much lower on the KTM. I live in a beautiful state, guys. Really do. Uh, so that's the bike stuff. You know, I'm still thinking about it. I'll probably ride this out the rest of the year. Right now, financially, things are just super tight. It's uh, and that is good to talk about for a second. It's not really a huge deal. It doesn't really impact uh, the channel at all. Um, work is going fantastic. I haven't really gotten any monumental raises been a long time. I think the reason why is because I was hired uh, into this company in 2010 by someone who saw me as the guy from San Francisco with the background he needed. So he offered me a pretty high salary uh, that was way beyond uh, my education level of my tenure at the company. So you know, the way we give out sal salary or wage increases is by um, uh, cost of living, merit, and sort of an, keeping everyone even so if there are 12 project managers, they all make uh, a certain amount of year, and you make 10% more than that, you're not going to get a raise. You're going to hang out where you were. So for three of the seven years I've been there, I haven't gotten a raise at all. For the other four years, I've gotten one to one and a half percent raises every year. Very minimal. And that's why I really feel strongly about anyone that you, is going out there a new job, uh, negotiate your salary for the future. Negotiate your salary to a point where you'll be happy with it in five years because, um, Going back to the table and trying to get five or ten percent more out of your your salary at your current employer, it's going to be next to impossible um, unless you're you're working three or four jobs as one person. Uh, and I'm not. I'm working one job, so uh, I don't really have enough negotiating power there. Uh, but my salary is great. I have no issue with what I make at my job. Um, but a year ago, well, let's say six months ago, I was renting a house. That uh, with four people, and we were each, each paying three hundred dollars a month for everything. Um, and that was it. Now, Heather and I each put two grand a month into a joint account that we share, obviously joint. And uh, and out of that account comes the mortgage, which is twelve fifty a month, super low for most people in mortgage. Uh, one hundred dollars a month for solar panels, which is what we were paying in power. Fifty bucks a month for Comcast internet. Uh, two hundred or so for our mobile phones and uh, home insurance, auto insurance, uh, and then household things. So we just bought a lawnmower for 400 bucks. We just bought um, a grill for 300 uh, stones for the patio for, for 300 So, you know, every month we use a bit of that money. Man, it's road construction season, isn't it? Um, so going from spending 300 a month to have a house to live in to 2000 a month, um, I'm fine, but... Essentially, my take-home uh, right now is like $1,500 a month uh, for my own expenses. And out of that, and out of that comes, I can't go a long way today. Out of that, out of that comes uh, my car, my food, my gas, uh, clothes, bike stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. The, the, the roof over my head 
is uh, is totally paid for uh, by the joint account, and uh, food is paid for, bills are paid for, but my car, not my insurance, my my car, my bike, and the rest of my living expenses that come out of my money, and it's um, and I haven't reduced my four hundred one k contributions, my Roth contributions, my HSA contributions, um, or my savings account contributions, so I kept those the same. So right now things are just super tight. So like. If this bike needs eight hundred dollars of work, that's my two weeks of money, <laughs> and it, it's expensive. It really is. It, it's a it's a hard place to be in. But I must say that Heather and I are play, paying double uh, our principal every month. We are paying off all of our bills. We have some twenty four month financing credit cards for appliances that are almost paid off. Uh, so we are we are aggressively getting to the fact where we can pull back from each putting two grand a month into the account and actually you know have some of that money to. to so basically change the contribution from each of us to be a lower figure um, so that we can we can afford to kind of spend money on ourselves again. Um, but this first year of home ownership, we are aggressively getting all of our bills done to nothing, uh, just except for the house payment, basically. So it, it, it's all sacrifices, right? But right now, things are, things are tough. Um, and, and it's, you know, there's no stress on, on us as a couple, but we... Um, we just didn't, you know, didn't really anticipate having to cut this much into our our, our personal finances uh, for the, the joint house. So, eh, it is what it is. So right now things are just super, super, super tight, uh, which is why I really can't afford anything for the bike. So I'm just kind of afraid to to really take it on trails and really haul ass because it it doesn't. It's if I if I break it, uh, it's just going to sit in my front yard. Until uh, and I'm not going to use a credit card to pay for it either. Uh, yeah, like like last week, I got an email from Best Buy. Best Buy is one of the cards we have. We bought the TV from it and a couple other things. Uh, I got an email from Best Buy that was like, "We increase your credit, increase your credit limit from four grand to like eight grand." I was like, "Okay, I, don't, I can't think of eight thousand dollars in Best Buy stuff I need to buy." And then uh, I got an email today from Bank of America that increased my credit limit from three thousand to sixty five hundred. I'm like, again. I don't know what I need to buy, but thanks for the increase. Uh, and that kind of, that kind of, you know, when you're tight on money, getting those email increases automatically, it, 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 it's like you kind of feel bad because you know that if you, if you max that card out, you'd be fucked. You wouldn't be able to pay it off. Um, anyway. So last thing I'll mention as I get closer to work here is that um, this weekend... Uh, look how bad my traffic is, guys. It's awful. Uh, I've been working really hard on the house outside and inside because um, this weekend uh, is my biannual, every two years, uh, magnum tasting, which is uh, not, not Trojan. <laughs> For those of you guys who started the beer or wine. Um, but every, every couple of years, I, over the last two years, I've been putting together a bunch of large format beers, one and a half liter bottles. Uh, we had a we have a three liter champagne that's not going to get open. That's going to be my wedding champagne. But you know, three liter, one and a half liter bottles. Um, I, I usually get one every month in a trade or in a purchase. And uh, then at two, the two year mark, I have like 20, 20 to twenty four bottles in my basement, and go, wow, I need to have some friends over. And the the, the rules are pretty simple. Uh, bring a donation because these bottles are really expensive. But also bring uh, a large format bottle yourself, just one or two 750s, and uh, and then bring a donation for food. Uh, so I did it two years ago at Heather's parents' house, and we're doing it again uh, this weekend. So I'm trying really hard to get the fire pit done and the patio done, and get things sort of set up there where it's uh, it's, it's sociable to have people over and have them hang out. Uh, so that's going to be this weekend. I have 22 magnums that I can open and one three liter. We'll probably get around to ten of them because uh, the other the other the other ones only a year old. They can still age a bit longer. Uh, so I'll do another one two years from now, and those will be three years old. So it'll be perfect. Um, yeah, it'll be a great weekend. So starting tomorrow, I'm taking tomorrow off. Guys are starting to arrive. We'll go get some beers at other places and rate some beer, and um, go to the grocery store. I'll turn here. I don't usually go this way, but it's funner. Uh, I'll go to the grocery store and get some meat. The grill is all ready to go. I bought a new Weber control knob and a new igniter for it. It was it was a priceless find, uh, as you guys saw the last video. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm happy for this weekend. It's gonna be fun. And Sunday, as soon as everyone leaves, we we start a load of laundry and a load of dishes, and then we go to uh, to Maine for the week. So that'll be uh, it's gonna be a great weekend. I'm really excited about it. Um, oh, I guess the golf bar, golf bar is doing fantastic. The golf bar is wonderful. Uh, as you guys know, I did the break, thirty thousand miles, warrants maintenance on it. Uh, it needs to be detailed. It needs to be paint corrected badly. Um, I mean, it's bad. It's really, really, really bad. Uh, there's a lot of scratches. My detailer and hooks it's going to go, like, just, just lose his shit when he sees it. But um, it's okay. So the golf is doing really well. I got a turbo blanket I need to put on it and go to the drag strip and test how that works. Uh, hey, we're at work. So I guess, uh, I guess thanks for watching, right? Nice to have you guys. Uh, thanks for your support. And, uh,